The usual refrain when you want more money is to sell more. Sell, sell, sell. Got to keep selling. I used to work for a auto parts chain and that was their refrain every day was we got to grow, got to grow. We got to build more stores and sell more alternators. And no one really ever stopped to take time to ask what for? Why do you got to keep growing? And certainly when you're self-employed, you want your business to grow. You got to make more money. You got expenses that come up. Some of them, some expenses you're expecting like college education. Some expenses, you know, they surprise you like your car blows an engine. And when I was first envisioning Ohio Woodburner, I just knew that I was not going to be able to have a volume business. I can't sell thousands of cords because, you know, it's just me. I don't have the equipment, the space, and then I've learned, you know, I don't have the supply either. Uh, so I had to do things small. I had to figure out a way to sell firewood and um, sell it at a high margin. And that has been my goal. So, of course, though, I think I'm executing this game plan pretty good. But, you know what? If I want more money, what are my options? <clears throat> you know, you got to sell more. You got to sell more. Well, did anyone ever stop and ask the question, what if I can't? Or what if I don't want to? You know, I, uh, I just know that this last year I had, I did pretty good. And... Uh, I can't tell you my exact cords that I sold because I just don't keep track of these kind of things. I know that I was around 150 cords and uh, I had fun doing it, but can I sell more than 150 cords? I think I can, but do I want to? I don't know, you know, because I kept busy and I kept as busy as I wanted to be. I think if you look at any entrepreneur, they have motivation behind them. You know, they want to uh, they want to put their time in, and I do. But I think you know, here's the trade-off. If I were in my 20s, I would probably be much more hungry, much more energetic, but I would have much less skills and knowledge. And then in your 50s, you know, you got a lot of skills and knowledge, but maybe, and I'm just speaking for me, you know, I think I could probably be more of a hard charger, but I think it's probably because I don't want to. I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm satisfied with what I'm doing. And I am able to make ends meet, you know, with this business model. But there is still the call. I need to sell more. I need to make some more money. And I, I think I can do it, but do I want to do it by selling more firewood? I just don't know if selling more is for me. It just seems to me that is there a way I can make more money by selling less firewood? And that's kind of like the foundation of Ohio Woodburner. You know, I didn't say I'm going to be this big firewood company and I'm going to sell all these massive quantities of cords. I never did say that. I'm selling small quantities, <clears throat> small volume, uh, high margin. If I want to attack this problem from that same spirit that I formed Ohio Woodburner, I don't think my answer is growing and getting bigger and bigger trucks and stuff. I think there is a way to make even more money by selling less firewood. Sounds interesting. Are you interested? Follow me and I'll explain. Guys, I came up with this idea for a new product and I am very excited about it. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I have done and how we're gonna be uh, putting all this together as a, as a package. And we'll talk about how we can sell this kind of stuff too, right? Some of my eagle-eyed viewers had seen this chipper in the background in some, sh uh, in some shots. And guys, this is from Titan Attachments, who you know is a sponsor of this channel. 
This is a wood chipper, three point hitch, PTO power. It's gravity fed, there's no uh, power in feed to it. It's a pretty simple machine. And I was chipping some branches with it. I had a project with Titan attachments that was not related to my channel. But when I saw all the chips coming out from the branches, that's where my rusty gears in my head started turning because what I was looking at was the exact same kind of wood chips that you find for barbecue, you know, that are sold at your hardware stores and the barbecue sections. And I thought, is there a way that I can chip firewood and sell it uh, packaged as a barbecue chip? So I've come up with this idea. I have already been selling some of these to some restaurants that I deliver to and to one of my existing customers that I sell bundled firewood to. But I think maybe I'm on to something. <clears throat> I'm not in a perfect situation yet. I have not perfected the, the process. Maybe you guys got some ideas. You can share them with me. But let me show you what I got going on. With the Titan Attachments wood chipper, I know I can make wood chips. So how can we package them? I found a bulk vendor and I'm gonna put links to everything down below for Ziploc bags. This is a heavier gauge bag. And because we're gonna be putting wood inside of them, I think they need to have holes poked in them. So I just poke holes in the bag. And then from there, I just put my sticker right on the center of the bag. So we are ready to fill this up with product. Guys, if you recall, I have um, a link in, my, in all of my videos for branding to help with your logos and any company literature. Her name is Melissa Nagy, and I asked her to make me some labels for my products. So I am going to chip cherry, oak, and hickory. I've also bought my own UPC codes, which is very easy to do. You can pick these up off of any website on the internet and get these made. You own the UPC codes and you can put them on what product that you want. And I just looked at other products that were for sale and other stores. I bought them and then just put my own labels together. I'm going to tell you what guys, if you're getting into this kind of a business, be exceptional. You don't have to copy my stuff, all right? Make it your own. But here are some ideas on how you can do it. One thing I learned, guys, is these stickers are expensive. But I had found a couple places that were making them cheap. And this was the first place that I found. And they printed them on this roll, because these are made for when the bags are labeled by a machine. Um, so, but I still got these pretty cheap. I'll put that link below. But then I found a local printer who printed these up for me. Um, they're just a little bit smaller, but it was well worth it. And now I've got me a nice inexpensive label. And my estimates are these labels are costing me 16 cents each and the bags cost me 10 cents each. So that means I have $0.26 cents in each bag that I'm producing, just for the packaging, all right? Now let's talk about making the wood chips this way. This chipper <laughs> really works, man. And that's when, you know, all of this started coming to me here was when I was chipping branches because it looked ideal. So my thought was, I am going to take firewood and just shove it down in here and I'll catch it in a tub. So when I first started doing this, I would use, <clears throat> I was sticking larger logs in because this takes up to a four inch branch. Well, it would, uh, the bigger logs I was finding, it would shear the, the shear pin on the drive shaft. So now I just take the extra step of splitting down my logs and I split them down with the super splitter and then I chip them. And I'm serious guys, <laughs> I'm averaging one stick of firewood per bag. 
all right? So think about what we can possibly sell these for and how much money is going into that bag with product, all right? One stick of firewood, how much is one stick of firewood worth to you? What I have started doing, I am splitting down some of my existing sticks of firewood. So I have tried two different ways. I have chipped green firewood and I've chipped dry and it does split a lot nicer when it's green but you know those chips need to be dry before they go into a plastic bag well i have an answer for that too with part of my process but let's go ahead and split some of these down guys making cherry so we're gonna be running these cherry sticks through the chipper in this case guys I have the deflector on the chipper pointing down I'm gonna be just chipping some of these here into a tub and then I'll show you the next step here we go So I have my PTO on, the chipper, and I'm ready to start beating it. One thing I have learned is it is loud, man. So I got my safety glasses, my hearing protection, and let's see this thing work. guys throwing out some bark but we are in good shape we got some nice chips and now I'll show you what I do next <laughs> I said it is loud man but this thing just does great it doesn't seem to stress you know um, chipping these probably it would help if the stick was a little longer it would help it feed better but I am very pleased with the way this thing works so I had, uh, when I was experimenting with this, I had put a, a bigger stick in and it kind of got wedged in there and it broke the shear pin on the drive shaft. So that's what I've learned that I just split the stuff small and man, it goes right through. But you know, here I am guys, this is probably like um, four sticks of firewood that I had split down. And the problem that I have though is, you know, there's moisture in these sticks. What I had learned on these hot summer days, I'll dump these in my dump trailer when the sun's out, you know, and it cooks them, man. 
and I had uh, experimented by filling one of these bags up and you know seeing how the moisture got inside the bag but the ones that I had left out uh, in the trailer in the hot sun they're like kiln dried it works great because they're thin and that water just escapes them pretty quick the next step then is to fill the bag and here is what I envision have you seen those um, feed scoops from your feed stores it's like a big scoop thing but it's got slats in it so that the fine stuff can fall out of it I think that is something that I need to get to help fill this up to speed this process up but for you guys for now I'm just going to show you you know we fill the bag what I would be doing is that these chips would sit out in the sun for a couple of days before I fill the bags up and if I'm making multiple species I would just have different areas in that trailer for the stuff to go into you just I just put it in there and spread it thin and they seem to cook out pretty nice And then I seal it and we're ready to go to market I don't have the process totally figured out just yet but this gets to a point that I also want to bring up with a lot of you guys and gals I keep getting that repeated comment you know I'm going to start a firewood business one day after I get everything all planned out and I have everything all my pieces in place guys I would ask for you to reconsider with that approach because what do you want it to be perfect for for who and for how it's not going to be perfect if you're going to get into any enterprise there is a case to be made with get it going and then figure it out and that's pretty much what I've done with Ohio wood burner I didn't have all my pieces in place and I've been fixing correcting improving every step of the way and that is what you're seeing with my new product idea with these um, wood chips I've taken the investment of buying bags and stickers at gross I have a chipper that I know can make me the product and I've just gotten this whole process started it is nowhere close to being perfect there's all kinds of steps in the process that I have to improve what you don't see guys what I did a couple days ago I had all of these chipped and I had them set out in my dump trailer I just looked at the weather and I knew it was going to be dry and man they dried out nice and they're not leaving any moisture inside the bag and these are safe to go to market is this the ideal setup for me guys well it is for me now you know I don't have much volume in sales which is the next step but I have a sellable product I got nice labeling I got nice packaging and I got a nice locally sourced product on the inside I think these look great and think about what can you sell these for I challenge you to go down to your big box store and see how much these are selling for I think you'd be surprised and if we know that this is one stick of firewood guys I think it's easy at retail to sell these for 10 to 15 dollars depending on your market and I would also expect you know wholesale if I'm selling these to a retailer to be somewhere around eight to ten dollars each that's my target and it's going to be my target until I know I can get more for it the way I see it guys I am selling a stick of firewood for ten dollars minus 26 cents for overhead um, yes you got a tractor you got a chipper but if you're selling these things guys and if you can get multiple accounts you'll get your money back quick this is a business model in and of itself where I know you especially if you had a kiln uh, to get these USDA certified and these could be sold retail and everywhere in the country what do these mean to me so I still enjoy making firewood selling bulk selling to restaurants this is in the same category to me as selling bundled firewood so 
you got to put a little bit more extra effort into it, but you are also moving less wood and you're increasing your price per cord. Holy cow, I am selling a stick of firewood for $10. So let's, how many sticks are in a cord? That is how I looked at this. I see this as a way to augment sales. This is a different product mix for me. It gives me more versatility in my market and it's getting my brand out there as well. So I have now uh, bulk sales, restaurant sales. I have bundled firewood and now I got barbecue chips. The last thing guys, we must address the three most important things about firewood. And those are sales, sales, and sales. We can make the prettiest product in the world, but if we have no sales, what do we have? I need to find a way to get these sold. And I already have my idea of leveraging the restaurants that I'm delivering, because I know some of my restaurants use these for some of their recipes. I'm also going to be approaching my current customers that I sell bundled firewood to. I have some grocery stores, drive throughs that have displays for uh, barbecue. I see that as well. And I'm also going to go to these locally owned grocery stores, locally owned hardware stores, outdoor stores, because wherever there is a display that has matches, starter fluid, charcoal, barbecue grills, why not sell a locally sourced product next to it? And people would pay a premium for this. That's the way I see it. And there you go, guys, a new way of making money selling firewood. Yeah, you got to have a tractor, you got to have a chipper, but guys, the requirement for firewood, very low. And these hardly take up the same amount of space as bundled firewood. Much easier to move, much higher margin, and uh, this is a business model in and of itself. I really hope that you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. And please leave your comments down below if you got some great ideas on what we can do to improve this. I am all ears. This is just the beginning for these guys. And I hope that I can show this to you as this side of my business develops. I want to thank everyone for watching. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, idea. All right, guys, everyone have a great day.